Hello everyone, if like me you've been struggling with the brutal difficulty of Frostpunk's endless mode, then I've put together some quick gameplay tips to help you get through that early game and into the flow of things. I'd like to start by saying that these tips are just my own opinions, there may be a better way of doing things, but after many many hours of trial and error, they do eventually work for me. They got me to that magical 100 day mark. So let's get started. My first tip is to rush tech straight away. The absolute first two buildings you should be building should be workshops. Fully staff them and get started on that tech tree. Quite simply, if you fall behind on research, you will lose. You should prioritise the scouting beacon, heaters, and then rush to level 2 so you can get the wall drill and bunk houses. Scouting allows you to get more workers, lots of steel and food, and gain steam cores for later use in the game, so get them scouts out there as quickly as possible. If you really want to cheat when doing this, you can check what the locations will contain before you go there by checking the Wikipedia page. Not that I'd do anything like that. The benefits of the other research I'll explain later on in some of the other tips. My next tip is to group your buildings together into districts. I have resources, medical, housing, and then just miscellaneous. For early resources, and while at minus 20 degrees, you can just freely gather from the piles on the map. But as soon as you can, place a road out to a group of resources and build a gathering post. Then, once you have researched a coal thumper, place it right next to it. Coal thumpers will produce coal piles that nearby gathering posts will then collect. They can be built anywhere and don't run out. One coal thumper can work with two gathering posts, and the upgraded coal thumper can work with four. I found that two coal thumpers and four gathering posts will get you through a good chunk of the early game, and the benefit by grouping them together is they can all be heated by one steam hub. And, if you go down the order law book later on in the game, you can boost the efficiency of all of these buildings with just one loudspeaker that you can place outside. My next tip is not to waste time on dead tech. The sawmill and generator range upgrades I think are irrelevant technology. The wall drill is vastly superior to the sawmill and also gives an endless supply of wood. So once you have a coal thumper and a wall drill, you basically have endless supply of coal and wood. The generator range is just too costly to run and also not needed. You can do the same job with steam hubs. So don't waste your time and resources on these. Speaking of steam hubs, this brings me to my next tip. Build steam hubs and heaters before upgrading your generator. They are cheaper to run and can save you a lot of coal early game. However, check that steam hubs are only on at the times that you need them to be. By default, they are on 24 hours after you build them. If it's only powering a workplace, then make sure it's turned to those workplace hours only. However, if it's in a residential area or heating medical tents, then it needs to be on 24 hours. Heaters can raise the heat of a single building. Very useful early on, and it's pretty much essential in the mid game. Also, when you upgrade anything to do with power, including your generator, it automatically applies. So check your heat sources are at the most efficient setting. You don't want to be burning coal if you don't need to. Next up is to use your code of laws. There are some essential bonuses in these trees that you need to survive. Child labour laws allow you to employ children in safe jobs, which can really help with labour early game. Care homes can stop people from dying. And if you take the order route, which I recommend, then there's some amazing bonuses. The most useful early are definitely child labour and extended shifts. So get these as soon as possible. Also, if you're running low on food, then soup can be used to gain more food from your raw food. Again, saving you early game. Next up may seem obvious, but keep people fed. Raw food is converted to cook food very quickly, and your cookhouse can get by with pretty much one member of staff for most of the game. Even at my 300 population city, I still only had one person in it. Early food production comes from hunting huts, which don't need to be heated so you can build them away from the main hub. But as soon as you have some cores, you should switch to hot houses. They produce twice the amount of food with only 10 employees. I used two of my starting cores on these and bypassed the other food buildings. This, again, got me through the majority of the early game. Next up is probably the most important tip on this list. Believe me when I say that I had a so many trial run of this game and this was always my downfall. Don't let people get sick. If the symbol for sickness is appearing on your screen, then it means that people are sick and they're not getting treatment. 
Build those medical posts and staff them with even just one engineer if you are tight on staff. It's better than leaving them to suffer. Sick people work at a reduced rate and believe me when I say, if you get mass sickness, it's the beginning of the end. To prevent sickness, make sure people aren't working in conditions that make them ill. You can check this by selecting the building to see its current temperature rating. But buildings are the easy part to heat up. You can use heaters and steam hubs. It's the homes that are the real problem. I rushed to get houses researched and built quickly before the first storm to stop mass sickness. The first one I did where I prioritized sickness treatment, I didn't lose a single person to illness in the entire game. It's so important. Next up is be a weatherman. Always keep an eye on the upcoming changes in temperature. Temperatures like minus 20 to minus 40 aren't too much of a problem, even with just a basic upgrade. But below that and without heat upgrades, your civilians will get cold, sick, reduce production and die. So be prepared. During storms, the temperature will go below what your current city can handle. You can select the generator and set it to overload, which will last roughly 24 hours. While it does this, coal consumption is massively increased, but it also raises the temperature by one level of your generator and all of your steam hubs, and it can save you in the final days of those icy blasts. Always make sure that when temperature changes, you adjust your generator, heater and hubs to match. Don't burn coal if it's not needed. If it is, use extended or emergency shifts beforehand to ensure you're not caught by surprise. But only if you can spare the discontent that comes when you activate extended and 24 hour shifts. Don't put yourself in a situation that you can't get out of. Cores win games. Getting steam cores and making automatons is a turning point for any game. They can work 24 hours and can man an entire facility on their own. Once I got my first one, I never ran out of a resource again, as I got my automaton to work through the night so it was ready for me in the morning. If you find a core while out looking, then get your scouts back home, rush a factory and get one made. Trust me, it's the beginning of everything running smoothly. This is why cores are so important when you're out scouting. Now I'm not advocating cheating, of course, but while you're out scouting, if you'd like to have a little look if the location you're about to go to contains a core on the Wikipedia page, well, let's just say it can be useful. Finally, my last piece of advice is to micromanage. Manage your people and heat effectively. At night, take engineers out of closed buildings and put them into medical posts. Don't have heaters on if they're not needed. And during storms, bring everyone home just to ride it out. I use storms as my chance to heal everybody up. Providing homes and coal production is well heated, then nobody will be getting sick. Well, that's the end of my list. I hope you learned something and your next attempt goes a little bit smoother as a result. Trust me when I say that the early game is the hardest bit. It does get easier. Just be patient and use trial and error. I did. Many trials and many errors. Good luck and stay safe. And warm. Try and stay warm too.